Welcome to a series of Bible devotionals presented by the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the church at Ephesus, in that opening chapter says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Our goal for this series of devotionals is to explore and better understand those blessings that are found in Jesus Christ. Hopefully, you will join us in this series, and together we can grow closer to God with the knowledge of His loving plans for redeeming all of mankind. In Romans 1.16, Paul says that the gospel is the power of God that leads unto salvation and eternal life. Friend, let's open our Bibles together and begin to seek and search God's Word. But first, let's go to Him with a word of prayer. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Would you bow with me, please? Our God and our Father in heaven, we're grateful for the privilege and the opportunity to once again open your word and to study. We're thankful, Father, for the written word, grateful that you have preserved in writing those things that you would have us to know. And Father, we pray you will bless us today with a good understanding of the cornerstone that you have left for all of mankind to build upon. We're grateful, Father, for Jesus the Christ and for the salvation that comes and is found in Him. Bless us now as we study together. In Jesus' name, and amen. Our devotional today is titled, Chief Cornerstone. Welcome to the Gatlinburg Church of Christ Bible Devotionals. Today, for just a moment, I want to focus on what the Scriptures, both Old and New Testament, present in the concept of a cornerstone. By definition, a cornerstone is the primary foundation stone of a building. It is, as the name implied, placed at the corner and will help determine the proper alignment of the rest of the building. In biblical times, buildings were often built using cut squared stones. The foundations then would be set and aligned to the cornerstone. If that cornerstone was not set properly, however, the whole building would be out of alignment. God, as the Creator, understood the significance of the cornerstone. In his discussion with Job, God questioned Job as to who had set the cornerstone for all of creation. <clears throat> Job t chapter 38, verses 4, 5, and 6. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have an understanding. Who determines its measurements? Surely you know, or who stretched the line upon it? To what were the foundations fashioned? Or who laid its cornerstone? And then in Isaiah chapter 28, there's a prophecy of another cornerstone that God would lay in Zion. Isaiah 28, verse 16, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Notice the description of that cornerstone. It will be a tried stone, one that is precious. It will be a solid and sure foundation. Jesus in his earthly, earthly ministry quotes from Isaiah as well as Psalm 118. In Matthew 21, verse 42, Jesus said unto them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And then in Luke chapter 20, verses 17 and 18, Then he looked at them and said, what then is this that is written? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Whoever falls on that stone will be broken, but whoever it falls on, it will grind them into powder. Both Isaiah, the psalmist, and Jesus are referring to the same cornerstone, the one who has become the chief cornerstone. Often the Bible is its own best interpreter. In the New Testament, the scriptures clearly identify the chief cornerstone. Turn with me, if you will, to Ephesians chapter 2, 
And listen to the Apostle Paul. He's writing by inspiration, and he'll identify that chief cornerstone. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fit together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place for God in the Spirit. Ephesians 2 verse 20, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Notice carefully, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Peter in his first epistle will quote from Isaiah. He'll explain the prophecy in relationship to those who believe and those who who do not believe. Turn with me to, to 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, evil, and envy and evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumbled being disobedient to the word to which they were also appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light who once were not a people, but now are the people of God, who who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. To those who believe in Jesus, He's the source of eternal life. To those who do not believe, He becomes a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. Remember Peter's words as recorded by Luke in Acts chapter 4? on the occasion of the healing of a lame man. Turn with me to that fourth chapter of the book of Acts. And let's pick up the reading at verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said unto them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given among heaven, among men by which we must be saved. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders and has become the chief cornerstone. For see, salvation is in Jesus Christ. He is the source of eternal life. There's no one else that we can go to for salvation. Friend, this morning, today, are you a Christian? Jesus is still the chief cornerstone. He has the words of eternal life. In Him, in Jesus Christ, there is salvation. In Him, there is eternal life. In Him, there's rest for your souls. For you see, He is the Christ. He is the Son of the living God. He is the tried and precious stone. He's the sure and solid foundation. He is the chief cornerstone. 
So the question comes, is he the cornerstone of your life? If, if not, he should be. And to accept Jesus as your Savior, you must believe with all of your heart that he's the Christ, the Son of the living God. Paul in his Galatian letter describes how those who are on this side of eternity, like you and I, and how we can accept Jesus and put him on as our Savior. Turn with me to Galatians chapter 3 now. And let's look at verses 23 through 29. Galatians 3, 23 through 29. But before, but before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which was afterward be revealed. Therefore the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we're no longer under a tutor. For you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Notice, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male nor female. For you're all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Galatians 3, verse 26 and 7 that I just read. For you're all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Notice, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Friend, I know of no other way given in the scriptures that we can put on Jesus Christ other than that simple act of baptism. God's plan of salvation is simple. You must believe that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the son of the living God. You must be willing to make that confession before men and then repent of your sins. Jesus' instructions concerning salvation also still include baptism as part of God's plan for saving all of mankind. In Mark 15, verses 15 and 16, And he said unto them, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. That leaves no one out. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. In fact, Jesus' teachings concerning the plan of salvation are not even subject to change by mankind. The gospel is still the power of God that leads to salvation. Romans 1 and verses 16 and 17, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it, the gospel, is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For you see, friend, Jesus Christ, we are all sons and daughters of Jehovah God. If you have questions about your salvation, please contact us at the Gatlinburg Church of Christ. We're located near downtown Gatlinburg. Our phone number is area code 865-436-6504. We would love to sit down and talk with you about the plan of salvation just as revealed in the pages of the New Testament. Thank you for studying with us today. May God bless you.